What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we'll be checking out a title called God of Weapons. I'm a little bit burned out on survivor light games, I'm not gonna lie to you, I feel like Vampire Survivors has really kind of dominated the sort of zeitgeist lately and sucked all the air out of the room. Love Vampire Survivors, but there are a lot of Vampire Survivors clones and, and things of that nature that have been coming out and they are better or worse and it's made me kind of be like eh, maybe I'll only cover like a vampire survivors game every now and again well this is that time this game is called God of Weapons and I think it's doing something interesting and in fact I don't think that this game's root source of entertainment is actually vampire survivors what I felt in this game was much more along the lines of Brotato uh, which is a completely distinct game that shares some of the hallmarks of Vampire Survivors, but ultimately I feel like has its very own mouthfeel and flavor. God of Weapons is similar in that it's trying to co combine Brotato with Backpack Hero, and I think that's a very good idea. Now, one thing you need to be aware of is that this, this is basically a tech demo. This is like a proof of concept. This is not a super polished demo. This is not a, a demo that is ready for commercial release. This is a demo that has some bugs on the inside of it, and it's got some thing. It's got a lot of things not implemented yet, so I'm going to be forced into sort of like speculation a lot of the time. But I do think that with the bare bones that they've got in here right now, they may have lightning in a bottle if they play their cards right, they apply polish well, and they figure out what influences they want to lean on very strongly. God of Weapons, I think, is a very promising game. So we're going to dive on in for about 25 minutes here today. There's only like one or two characters in the game. Your average run is like nine minutes. So this probably will not be a very long video because this game gets the idea across very rapidly. But I think it is a good idea to hybridize those two gameplay styles and in fact I think there's room to draw in three or four more influences from other similar action RPG horde crimson land style games and create something pretty incredible here like I think this is a really good foundational concretion to build upon and if it's utilized properly this will turn into something good so let's take a look at it this demo is freely available anybody can play it you can go play it i can go play it your mom can go play it right this second it's down in the description on top of that you can also take a look down there and you will find a link to my discord and my twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live let's go ahead and give it a crack here shall we so we've got two characters as of right now they've both got their own flavor of play style so the knight he hits really hard he gets a lot of extra melee power so his weapons tend to do a lot more damage than everybody else's weapons and he's got more hp the other character is the raven the raven gets five percent damage for each individual weapon inside their inventory which means that the raven can get utterly absurd dps increases if she focuses on things like shurikens and daggers uh, those things make her very strong we'll start out with the knight for right now and if we die very quickly we'll swap on over to the raven and give her a go the animations look pretty good in this game i actually did when i first logged in i kind of did like a quick twirl to figure out whether or not it was foot tracking properly and everything looks pretty good to me. Feels all right. Uh, there's also a nice visual sense of progression here with the characters that exist because each weapon that you add to your inventory, uh, each weapon that you add to your inventory is going to float around your character, which means by the end of a run, you kind of look like Magneto, telekinetically levitating all kinds of weapons around you that are lashing out and hitting things on all sides of you. It's very satisfying to look at. I do have a little bit of meta currency, but I don't think the meta currency is actually actively inside the game just yet. I haven't seen anywhere where I can spend that stuff. It looks like we're going to have four characters. And then we've also got two doors here, which is kind of interesting, and a number of sconces that are not lit. Which makes me kind of wonder, like, is there going to be a shop inside of here that we can go to? Like, what's going to be inside that room over there once it lights up and it's been implemented? What's going to make these little lanterns light up? Because these lanterns are not really anywhere else in this decorative area. There's a gibbet right there, but there's a campfire over here. There's like a lantern on that side or maybe like a gibbet. I'm kind of wondering how this area is going to flesh out once you spend some meta currency and once that whole system's in the game. But for the moment, let's go ahead and give it a run. Uh, so the game is pretty simple. It auto-fights. You hang out, and it, your axe is just going to attack stuff around you while you stand around. You don't need to, like, tell it to do that. It's not necessary. 
Uh, you can press the shift key, by the way, to change your control method. So if you want to control the direction that the axe attacks, you can absolutely do that by hitting shift, and it'll say twin stick up in the top right. If you press shift again, it'll put you back into just auto battle mode. So this is where we take a look at where the game first hits on sort of that backpack hero idea. As you kill enemies, you're going to get XP. As you level up, you're going to get new slots for your treasure chest. You're going to be able to buy those new slots. Then you can buy items. You can put them inside of there. These items will give you various bonuses. Now, this game has a little bit of an auto-battler flavor, but it's also got those feelings of Backpack Hero there. So it's not just taking, like, the Backpack Hero mechanic, unless Backpack... I don't know. I haven't played Backpack Hero in forever, and I'm sure they've updated it, like, a million times. But everything in this game, you'll notice, has a tag on it. Agile. Swift. Uh, this over here has Sharp. Swift. This right here has Agile and Blessed. So if you stack up those tags, you will get auto battle bonuses that make everything that shares those tags better. On top of that, every single item in this game, well, most of the items in this game, they have a passive uh, that kind of urges you towards, like, homogenous builds. Uh, so, for example, having axes adjacent to one another will give all of your axes more attack speed. Uh, that one right there doesn't have one, but with these daggers right here, uh, it looks like this actually doesn't get any bonus from its neighbors. It just stacks damage for every kill that it acquires, which is also pretty cool. For right now, I'm going to take, I think, this axe right here. I think I have room for it. Oh, no, it's not. It needs to be mirrored in order for that to work. Gotcha. Okay, well, I'll put you in right there then. And since I've got those next to each other, that's given us a bonus to attack speed. I don't think I have room for anything else sexy inside of here. So we will just go ahead and take our two axes. I'm going to put things back into 360 mode so that it just kind of attacks on its own. I found that the game is much better at choosing who to attack than I am. Like, when I choose who to attack, I find that the enemy just, like, rocks up on me and is like, Hey, where are you from, bruh? And I'm just like, uh, no, I'm not with nobody, man. I'm just trying to get where I'm going. Can I get a hall pass? And it's like, no pass. And then it rolls up inside my booty and destroys me, and I hate it. Uh, so for right now, I'm going to let the game handle my auto attacks. There are crates and things around that you can interact with in order to get drops that will, like, gather all your goodies or give you, like, an invulnerability shield or heal you, that kind of stuff. We leveled up four times right there, which is really good for us. Let's focus on finishing out just kind of like this central thoroughfare. I can get another axe. That's definitely an opportunity here. I guess it depends if we want to go try axe. Don't worry about this axe down here. This is what I was talking about with bugs. Uh, this axe right here, I drug it out of my inventory and tried to get rid of it to just like sell it when I was trying to figure out how to sell. And it got stuck there and it never left. And it's just been sitting there ever since. I restarted the game. It's still sitting there, so it must be inside the save file or something that exists. I don't know. I can't seem to get rid of the axe. Like I said, this is a very early tech demo. I would prefer a little bit more polish. I'm of the opinion with games uh, that when you... So games are kind of like a, a restaurant, or they're, they're kind of like a carpenter, or like a service, or like a plumber. You get like one opportunity to make a first impression. And I think that if you mess up that opportunity, people are very unlikely to like ever come back. Now with demos, I think it's a it's a little bit more likely because not they didn't pay money for it and they didn't get like indirectly screwed. But still, it's one of those things that like I always prefer more polish versus less polish. This game does have a dash move as well, just in case you like your little auto battlers and your little horde survival games to have, you know, a little bit of a, a dash move inside of it. I actually need to see if there's health or something inside of a crate. There was indeed, and I found that health to be particularly helpful. Good. Uh, we've got two spaces we could play around with right there. I'll finish that, and I'll start on that column over on that side. I Sometimes I feel like when I play games like this in Backpack Hero that it's like a good idea. Ooh, a tier two scroll, huh? That's a lot of extra XP. I'm going to take it to see if I can front load. That's exactly what I'm going to do. If I could take the next level or two and get a lot more level ups than I would normally get off that extra 30%, I think it'll benefit us a lot in the long term. 
just with extra slots that we can fill in with weapons, thus increasing our survivability via passives and actives, and maybe giving us a few more things to look at. Just keep attacking, just keep whacking and smacking and chopping those skeletons. I'm gonna go up this way. I'm gonna kind of live in this corner for a minute. The game does seem to have reasonably decent enemy variety as well. I've been actually, I don't know if they're just like grabbed from an asset store or anything else like that. My knowledge of various assets that are available through stores on Unity and things of that nature are not very good, but either way, there's a lot of different types of enemies and they all seem to have like the same-ish sort of color scheme and the same-ish sort of aesthetic. And I have appreciated it thus far. We get three spaces here. I want that spear, dude. I'm a big spear fan in video games. I want that spear really bad. I want it, like, really, really bad. How can I reconfigure this? So if I get rid of the ebony dagger, it's already got a little bit of goodies thrown in there, though. Like, what if I take you that way, and I take you that way? How long is the spear? The spear is five. We can fit it right now. That's just got polearm as a tag, sharp and swift. So agile-wise, we've got dodge chance and we've got attack speed right now. If we could pick up something else that has the swift tag, that'd be good. And we do have a little three space right there. We could pick up some regeneration from the potion. That might not be bad. We could pick up a dagger. That's got sharp and agile. That's got agile and swift. I'm looking for swift right now is what I'd really prefer. I mean, I could take another ebony dagger and that would give me another swift. So now we're up to six attack speed and some crit chance. I really like that auto battler mechanic where you can basically interact with all your tags and figure out like what you want to put where. I like that a lot. Like it's one of those things that I feel like in video games gets me addicted is like stacking little tags that move your way up a tree and make like your character and your build and your weapons more effective. I am starting to feel the killing power right now of the build. Like I'm starting to feel like stuff's going down. I gotta get back to a crate. Is there anything in there? Just monies? Okay. I'm not like super crazy interested. Another thing I appreciate about this game is that the enemy bodies stay on the ground for a good long while when you kill them. If they made that a toggleable option, I would turn it on. Let's call it... I was going to say, for this to really be useful, I'm going to need something contiguous. I'll put a health potion in right there. Oddly enough, like a lot of the supplementary items, like the dice and the elixirs, do not have tags. And I think that they should have tags uh, to also make your little passive items, like your scrolls and your potions and, you know, your knickknacks and your tchotchkes. Like, make all those generate bonuses as well. Like, get that, like, super layered so that, like, not only are you playing around with your active weapons, you're also playing around with all your little passive items that you have on you. That elixir, it gave us some extra HP, and it's given us, like, a little tiny trickle of HP regeneration. What's in here? Anything good? Oh, I'm back on twin stick mode. No wonder things feel like they're going poorly. I was gonna say, you gave me control of the vehicle again. I've told you, that's a mistake. You never, I'm not the guy that you let drive, all right? I'm the, I'm the guy you keep in the passenger seat to occasionally make you chuckle or, or like to lock the windows when I fart. Like, you, you don't keep me there for anything actually utilitarian and functional. You, you keep me there just for morale purposes. At least that's the way that I feel about it. Two more spaces. I guess I'll take two up there. Scroll doesn't feel like it's really generating any value for me right now anymore, so I'll probably sell it to get it out of the way. The spyglass would be nice. A little bit of extra range on every single weapon would be good. I think we're maxed out. No, we're not maxed out on swift. Let's max out swift then. Oh, it keeps going. It only tells you what the next bonus is. Oh, wow. So you can take that up to like absurd levels of attack speed. Okay, yeah. 
Well, fire away. I mean, our attack speed's looking pretty good right now. I don't think we're we're necessarily at the point where I can just garlic and sort of Bible it up and stand still and annihilate enemies ad nauseum without ever taking any damage, but we're getting close. Like, you can, you can kind of feel it coming together here. And I, I think, like, the additive weapons combined with how good the actual attack animations themselves look make it sort of satisfying to put these builds together. Like I said, there's a lot of, like, non-tangible factors with this game where I feel like it's pulling on a lot of good threads here. And if if properly utilized, I think this could be something special for the Brotato community to interact with. Like, it's a bit of the same, but it's a little bit more flavor in a different direction. And I like that about it. I will take another potion temporarily right here. Just to help. It's lowered my damage a tiny bit, but... There's no accounting for the fact that we just got six more HP, and then on top of that, we should actually be able to visually see our regeneration at this point. Yeah, before we even spawned in, we were regenerating HP. So we've got about an HP per second coming in, or like an HP per two seconds coming in that I think will actually be beneficial if we end up getting pinned somewhere with problems. I'm gonna kinda like get myself into a safe space over here. I want all enemies on one side of me. Like I would really prefer that I not be surrounded in this experience. XP's looking good, it's stacking up. We do have like, I think an invulnerability totem right there. So I'm gonna pick that up just in case any damage sneaks on through. The game does not appear to have damage on touch. Well, maybe it does. Like I noticed the enemies are attempting to do attack animations. So that made me think like maybe there's no damage on touch here, but now I'm scared to go test it. We get four spaces this time around. Very nice. I want this top area. I want this top area very badly. There we go. So we've isolated the top area. That's given us four more slots. We could take a guardian belt. That's going to take a two by three to get an automatic crossbow. But I think that sounds super rad. I would be so, and I want, I want to try it. I'm going to get rid of some of these ebonies right here. We'll put that right there with the auto crossbow, because that sounds like something that possibly would be something that I'm into. These are better axes right here, so I'm going to sell that. I do think there's an opportunity here for them to add on the upper lid, like a Herodric cube, and you can take weapons of a similar grade and of a similar type or of similar tags and combine them in some kind of interesting way with like an animation where like the lid closes and it shakes around for a second, then it pops back open, and the new item is right there, and then you can toggle the animation inside the options if you didn't want to use it. There's, there's, like I said, man, there's a lot of fertile ground here. There really is. There's, there's a lot of interesting ideas. Ooh, the Thunder Spear. It's an enchanted spear. Okay, screw you, Regeneration. I don't want you anymore. I want the, I want the Thundarian Spear. That's what I want. And Polearm gives us more range universally. Very nice. Yeah, I see a lot of promise here. Ooh, that auto crossbow is spicy. It's got knockback. Oh, dude, we're... Okay, I gotta do an auto crossbow build. I gotta do an all auto crossbow build at some point. They have now piqued my interest. This is this is good stuff right here. I'm, I'm liking what they're playing around with. Time will tell if they capitalize on it and if they strike while the iron's hot with, like, the, the what they've captured here I think is compelling, though. I don't normally get excited about survivor style games because it's easy to feel like you've seen it all or like a lot of the survivor games only add like one tiny gimmick that doesn't really affect the overall gameplay altogether that much. I think combining these two ideas was very astute. Let's add two more slots. We've got the discount voucher. That counts as a projectile weapon, right? So we can get more range if we stacked it up a little bit further. It fires very quickly, which makes me think it probably stacks fairly generously with crit. We do have a lot of attack speed. We could probably get away with some crit right now. We only lost one attack speed from the tab, so... I feel okay with it. I feel, I feel pretty solid with the idea. It, it definitely feels like we've got something working here. What does that do? I'm not exactly sure what some of the, the pickups do. Because they don't really tell you. It looks like those might actually be full level ups that we're getting out of those crates. 
It's hard to say. Inventory tabs, possibly? In which case, I didn't know you could get inventory tabs out of crates. Which makes me think I need to be breaking a lot more crates once spawned on top of the collision of the map tile item right there. Like I said, very early build. Very, very early build. It's getting a little bit chaotic up in here. It's getting a, it's getting a little bit worrisome. I'm beginning to fear for my safety. Just un poco. Not, not, not a lot. No grande, just poco. And there you go. We got eight spaces. Wow. I don't even know what I want to do with eight spaces. I guess I want to get another line along the bottom. I think that'll work. Spyglass might not be a bad idea, but we've got room for more daggers to really boost up the old attack speed. We could take another round of polearm. Which would give us even more range for our weapons to strike at, but I think focusing on DPS for right now may be the better call. That's an upgraded version of the Ebony Dagger, and since we've got a lot of money that we're sitting on, I actually think I'll just swap it out. What does the horn do? It just flatly gives us melee power? Okay. Let's do it. What else you got for me? Two more melee power right there. I don't have... I, I don't physically have any lifesteal, so... Losing lifesteal does not really feel like that big of a deal to me. It would be cool if the supplementary items like the horns and the gloves and the dice affected your character's appearance. So, for example, there would be like a little glove that floats in the air that pats him on the head every now and again as like a little tiny bit of humor. Or like the dice gets thrown and you can hear it clatter on over and it's just got like a random number on it from 1 to 20. And so that you get like a little bit of like a, you know, a, a little bit of a D&D &D reference right there. And then like if it ever lands on 20, it does some kind of effect or something that raises your damage by like 1. <laughs> you know, just as kind of like a nod to the fact that you rolled a perfect 20, like a nat 20. I find that little things like that really add to a gameplay experience and make it memorable. It's not just mechanics and aesthetics. Sometimes it's like the little extra things, too, that if they're done especially well can make a game stick with you over the course of time. Yeah, this is God of Weapons. I feel like the game got its idea across. I think the game is very interesting. Time will tell if it actually turns out to be something of note as development continues and as the developers keep working on it. But I think the idea that they've struck on is solid gold. And I think it's a really, really good idea to mix auto battler with vampire survivors with backpack hero. I think it's a supremely good idea. And so anyways, I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were messing around with a game called God of Weapons, which I'm actually kind of a believer in right now. Go check out the demo. Let me know what you think for yourself. Do you think I'm on base? Do you think I'm off base? I don't know. It can It's never easy to tell in matters of the opinion, which is really entirely what I do here on the internet. But I think a little bit more polish and like one or two more mechanics, and they got, they got something on their hands here. I'll catch you all later. Bye, folks.